Hey friends, just getting set up over here. And I'm sure you guys are starting to get ready yourselves. Let's see here. Hey, Pure Community. So we got two cameras. Ready for lots of fun. Awesome. Welcome, troops. Hey. Yay, friends. Okay, so this class, like all of the classes that I've been doing, I'm going to start off inviting you to vibe up your space. So go ahead, look around your room, see how you can make the energy just feel better so that the space feels more sacred and special for this practice that we're going to be doing. All right, you guys seem to be a little crooked here, so let's get you straight. Excellent. All right, friends. Welcome, my name is Marisha Doe, for those of you who don't know me. And today's class is a level two, then I put plus in parentheses because there'll be lots of options. Um, and it's called Handstand Holiday. All right, the idea behind this class is teaching handstand in a way that is more playful and intuitive. Um, a lot of times, um, the idea of handstand can cause tightness in the body, and then when we over apply technique, that can lead to rigidity in the body. Uh, when I was first learning handstands, they looked something like this, with the chest forward and the back in a sway. That's how the yogis in the older yoga books from like the 80s and 90s did their handstands. Nowadays, we tend to like it a lot straighter. Um, so what we'll do today because that straighter variation is quite difficult to learn off the bat, um, we're gonna just do what we can do to make handstand as accessible as possible. And I'll give you the tools to get it straighter down the line. Um, but at first, we just want more hang time up there. Okay, so what we'll do when we're in our handstand that, um, we want to keep our bodies happy as we move through the class today, and I'll give lots of tips as we continue on, but just so you have some things to think about. The problem with the more, for me, older handstand um, is that when we kick up especially, and you have that sway in the back, when these muscles stay close to the floor as the leg goes up, you're likely to throw your back out. It doesn't feel so good. So we want to make sure that we don't put our low back in that vulnerable position. So rather than thinking of lifting the leg high when we do the three leg down dog and other such poses, we're practicing rolling the outer hip down and pulling the thigh into its socket so that the core is more supported. And then from this position, when I kick up to my handstand, my back is intact. Now, the area that I think cheating is okay is when the shoulders are forward a little bit. This tends to make balance easier. Later on, we'll work on getting the body straighter. We'll do some hip stretching, some core work, and if today your handstand looks like this, give yourself the space to be there. Okay, the more that you can uh, soften the veil of judgment about your practice, the more inspired you'll be to get back up over and over. So the goal with this handstand holiday is to elevate the mood so that you enjoy the process of learning it. Okay, it's, it's a fun game, it's a puzzle, and I'm gonna give you lots of tools to figure out what it is you can do individually, your body, to help you stabilize. So we'll go through hip stretching, shoulder opening work, different types of core work, and then of course, forearm stabilizing, strengthening work to better support the wrists. Okay, the second part of this handstand holiday is an arm balance. Ekapada Kundinyasana 2. So for this one, after we worked on our handstand, 
we're going to work toward this pose. Now, alignment and sequencing to me are, they're artful, but at the same time, it's not rocket science. Let's look at the pose and figure out which postures we would want to prepare for it, right? So here, my hip crease needs to be pretty bendy for me to get my chest down. My shoulder needs to have some mobility to wiggle underneath. From here, my hamstring of this leg, the leg that will extend forward, needs the mobility to extend. Now we'll do some cheating stuff for those of you who have tightness at the hamstring attachment, perhaps by the butt and leg, where you can do the pose without it. The back leg now, we need the engagement of the glute to help us lift up. And then also, there's a little bit of a back bend. So we need the back muscles to be able to contract. And then from there, some of us will continue. And of course, there's arm and core strength in that. And we'll also discuss how you can use uh, some energetics, some more subtle energetics to help move the chest forward enough in Ekapada Kundinyasana too. After we work on those two individually, some of us will continue the handstand work or maybe take a break, work on headstand. Others will practice going from our handstand position. We're gonna work on splitting the legs and then from here, reaching the chest. So see the back bend in my spine, in my spine as I lower down. Okay, so we wanna see and we're also gonna, I'm gonna give you some tips on doing that from headstand as well. Okay, if you're thinking to my yourself, my God, Marisha, that's ridiculous. I cannot. It's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to. All right, I'm inviting you to play this game with me, and I hope that you come along for the ride. And uh, I think it's about time to get this party started, shall we? Yeah. Okay, so let's meet in a seated position on the mat, and you may want to cross your legs. Okay, so before we get high, we get grounded. In your seated position, stay as you are. Feel the part of you that's touching the floor. So the sit bones. And then from this position, think of pressing those sit bones down and see if you can feel a rebound of energy up through the chest. And then as you do that, with the next exhale, press the lower belly back more. Try to keep that tightness there, and as you inhale, feel the breath riding along your spine up. So you imagine every exhale makes you more compact, and every inhale funnels energy skyward. Maybe you even think of that energy coming from the base of your spine. Maybe you even think of that energy coming from the thigh bones pulling into the socket. So imagine you could feel, stay in that position, but the sensation of that thigh bone drawing into its socket from your cross-legged position. And if you can't feel it yet, close your eyes and keep thinking about it. So we build clarity by continuing to pay attention, sometimes long after we feel like it. So see if just in this moment, it's a short moment, you can begin to more seriously entertain the possibility of feeling those thigh bones drawing in, feeling the low belly lift, Feeling the sides of the waist, the whole rib cage lift, and simultaneously your shoulders and your jaw are relaxed. Close your eyes and feel your body. Feel your body. Use the sensations, the feelings perhaps in your core or of the breath, to help you better connect with where you are in this present moment. 
not just from an intellectual perspective, but from a full being perspective. Feel yourself here. If you'd like to engage the ujjayi breath, you may want to make a slight constriction at the base of the throat. And you can use that oceanic sound, that little hum or whispering sound, kind of like the ocean, to accompany your practice. Every inhale, you have a reminder to lift up. Every exhale, you feel your body drawing in. You feel strong. Continue like this. Open your eyes. Switch the crossing of your legs. Go ahead and reach your arms forward. We're going to review the alignment for a handstand right here. Stretch the shoulders away toward your fingertips, away from the torso. And then from this elongated position, start to revolve your pinky fingers a little bit more toward the ceiling. Reach the arms up 45 degrees and then stretch the shoulders to the fingertips. So in our handstand, because we're going against gravity and across the shoulders, we want length there. And then go ahead and reach the arms all the way up. Notice if when you take your arms overhead, they start to bow sideways. Try to feel the triceps wrap toward the front of your space. Lift up through the fingertips. And then notice if the core below your rib cage started to spill forward. Talk to those muscles there and ask them to draw back as you continue that work of feeling the thighs draw together. The center of the chest lifts through the fingertips. Hold here for another three. Stay with your breath. Two. And then take your hands forward. Step your feet back. Down dog. So we're going to go through a sequence some of you may be familiar with, Siri Namaskar H. You can pedal out your feet in your down dog, do what makes you feel more comfortable in this pose. <sighs> Those sighs can be very helpful. All right, and then as you start to move towards stillness, notice if you sunk in your shoulders, push the floor away. Notice if your ribs started to sink forward, draw them back. Look forward between your palms, and on an exhale, step the feet forward. On an inhale, come to a flat back position. Okay, if your hands are on your shins, that's great. If your knees are bent, that's great too. We're going to inhale and exhale five times here. Your next exhale folds in and use your hands. You can apply a little pressure if you're very bendy. Inhale, flat back. In your flat back position, try to create a little, if it's not, you know, already screaming at you, but if you're ready for a little bit more stretch, start to create a back bend sensation. So adding a back bend to forward folds helps stretch the backs of the legs more. But again, feel the feedback your body's giving you and don't overdo it. Exhale, we fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale. Exhale, last one, inhale. This time, see if you can take your chest or your stomach a little lower, your butt and shoulders a little higher. Hold here for three, two, fold in, grab hold of your elbows and hang. Feel the backs of the legs continuing to open up. 
and then release your elbows, sit back, chair pose. Remember the work we did at the start of the class when you were seated in Sukhasana. Feel the shoulders elongate, feel the front ribs draw in, feel the spine extend skyward through the crown of the head. And then go ahead, sit a little deeper. Feel the low belly lifting off of the thighs. And then sit all the way down. You know where we're going. Lay back and draw the knees in. So this core exercise is nuanced with the breath. So listen carefully. If you get confused, just do your best. It's good enough. Lift the head and chest and with your arms, pull the legs closer to you. And then try to keep the legs this close. Reach the arms forward. On an inhale, you're going to extend the right leg up and you'll do your best to be straight through the back of the knee. Energize through the toes. On an exhale, you're going to draw the left knee in and lift the chest higher. So it's like you're balancing almost on one vertebra. On an inhale, so the inhale we have a movement. And then you pause. For your exhale, there's just a tightening of the left leg and a lifting of the chest. Don't worry, we'll go faster. And then on your next inhale, you lower the leg further. You pause, chest and knee for first exhale. And then push more air out. Second exhale. Inhale, now the left leg lifts. So the inhale is the movement. Exhale, right knee tightens, chest lifts. The inhale, we move 45 degrees forward. For your exhale, right knee and chest lift. The inhale, you move the left leg to hover about hip height. First exhale, right knee, chest. And then push more air out. Pull the left knee in. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, left knee, chest. Inhale, 45. Pause, lift. Inhale, hover. Pause, lift. Push more air out. In. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Inhale. Right knee, chest. Inhale. First, push air out. Second, more air. Inhale. Last round. Knee, chest. If it's a lot on your neck, hands behind the head. Knee, chest. Inhale, first exhale, double exhale. Inhale, right knee chest. Inhale, right knee chest. Inhale, hold, reach. Okay. Wowzer. Knees to the left, gaze to the right. Make it a nice lazy stretch. I mean, it can't get much harder from there, right? Hello, abs. Inhale, center, and exhale. See, that's my technique, actually, just to get you so revved up. You're so ready. It's just all easy from here. Even handstands aren't scary as that stuff. <laughs> I actually love it. And then come back to center. Drop back, forth, back, and chair pose. Exhale, stand up. In this position here, Feel the same work we've been doing since the start of class along the shoulder girdle. Feel those front ribs drawing in. And then as the Anusara people say, you want to inner spiral the thighs. I just call it stick your butt out. So that's the inner thighs moving back. Stick the butt out a little and then simultaneously reach the tailbone down. So you want to feel that hollow body that the gymnasts love and at the same time the ease the yogis love, still stabilizing that lumbar. Maybe you look up, hands touch. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step back, plank pose. In your plank, move the shoulders just beyond the fingertips. Add a little pressure. Place the knees down. Lower the chest forward. So as you move to your chaturanga, feel the chest forward, forward, and then you lay. And we'll pause here. Place the tops of the feet on the floor. Tent your fingertips and curl up. Feel the chest opening here just a bit. So this is kind of like the work for Ekapada Kuninyasana 2 when we're lowering down, kind of, and then lower. This is more like the work. Go ahead, lift the legs up. Glutes, back strength, and lower down. Up dog, chest forward and up. And then from your low belly, 
hips up and back, down dog. Inhale, plank pose, and then place your knees down. In your plank, in your, this position here, see that the index fingers are pointing straight ahead. And feel that the webbing between the index finger and thumb is strongly grounded. Feel that the weight is moving off of the base of the wrist and into the fingers and press the fingertips down more. See if you can feel that the part of your hand that connects your fingers to your palm is strongly grounded, moving the weight off of the base of the wrist and more toward your fingertips. And then go ahead, walk your knees in closer. Lift your palms and your thumbs off of the mat. So now we're really exaggerating the work of the energy moving forward on the fingers. See that your thumb is not touching the floor. Keep your thumb off of the floor as you lower just the palms down. Feel that the core is lifted and the shoulder blades are spreading. Inhale lifts up. Exhale with control lower. Inhale up. Exhale with control lower. Continue like this. And I'm going to remind you, you feel the belly is lifted. You notice that the elbows are not bending. If it feels shaky, you bring your hands closer to your knees. If you want it harder, you take them further away. Last three, two, one. Go ahead and turn your palms around. Palms face the ceiling, fingertips towards your knees. Do a little tug back, 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 back. And then turn your fingers, to palms down, fingers to the sides, rock side to side. And then turn your palms face up, fingertips face toward each other. You rock side to side here. And then reorient your hands, plank pose. From here, start to lift your hips up and back and lower your forearms to hover just a centimeter off of the floor. Turbo dog for three, two, and place it down. Oh, dolphin never felt so good as after turbo dog. In this position, bend your knees, press your elbows down to get long through your shoulders and move your chest closer to your thighs. My bendy friends, you can have your legs straight. The idea behind this pose is to open up the angle between the upper arm and the torso so that straight handstand is more accessible. So go ahead, press the elbows down and move the chest back. We'll do little bounces back for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, push back and hold. Bend your knees deep, look forward, you can do this. Both elbows at the same time, spring up. If you didn't get that, let's all do it again. You can have your knees down for one round. Hands stay down, lift both elbows, chest forward. Memorize that feeling. Go ahead, hands down and chest forward. Nice. Knees up, dolphin pose, press back. Look forward, bend the knees, lift up, plank, chaturanga. Up dog, and down dog. Take a few smooth breaths here. I think we're ready to start to put some stuff together. Reach the right leg up. Feel the left heel move closer to the floor. Roll the outer right hip down and draw the right thigh into its socket here, like we discussed at the start of class. Look forward between the hands and hop your left foot closer to your hand. Have your eyes on one spot on the floor between your index fingers. Stable gaze, stable body. Bend the left knee, right foot lands. Let's do that one more time. Bend the right knee, it can be a one inch hop. Or have the right leg straight, everybody, maybe through a handstand. Right foot lands. You can practice with a wall behind you as well. Bend the right knee deeply. Reach the arms up, crescent lunge. We're gonna stretch the front of the left hip more by leaning both arms over to the right. 
Feel the front of the left hip open up as you draw the right hip back. Feel the left heel move forward. Feel the low belly lift. Inhale, straighten up. Bring the hands to prayer. I think the arms may be a little tired. Lean forward, warrior three. In your warrior three, feel the right hip drawing back and the outer left hip reaching to the floor like you did in your three leg dog like you're gonna do in your kick to handstand. Hold for another three, two, standing split. Here, I don't mind if your lower back and hip can handle it, you can open the hips in your standing split, or if you know your body's sensitive, you can have the hips squared. Yogi's Choice will hang out here for just a little bit longer. And then slowly release. Roll the right hip back, reach the chest forward, palms on the floor, eyes on one spot in between the index fingers. Be bold, bend the right knee, swing up and down. One hop, don't worry, we'll use the wall in a moment. Two, keep going, keep the arms straight, eyes on one spot, and feed yourself with encouraging thoughts. You got this. Go ahead, and if it's a hot mess, that's fabulous too, just enjoy the ride. All right, here you are in your home, doing your yoga, working on the handstands. Life is good, go ahead. One more hop for your handstand holiday. Land the foot down, crescent lunge. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, take your left hand down and reach the right arm up. From this position, lift the big toe side of your right foot up and send the knee toward the right. So we're just getting a deeper stretch along the outer right hip. Hold here for three, two, hug the knee in. Roll to the pinky toe side of the left foot. Side plank, press the left hip up into the right. Extend the chest forward and vinyasa. Hands down, move and breathe. You're welcome to skip those vinyasas if they feel like a lot for you. Take a larger inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. <sighs> right here, right now. Inhale, reach the left leg up. Try to ground your right heel a little bit more. Give your right hamstring a little extra love. And then roll your outer left hip down and draw the thigh bone into its socket. Feel the core below the rib cage <sighs> hug into your body as you look forward. Keep that part of your core drawing in as you hop the right foot closer to your hands. And then dare yourself. Look at one spot on the floor. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna, the wall's there. It's gonna catch me. Go ahead, hop, switch, boom. Oh, I think we need to try that again. Hop, switch, boom. Last time, hop, switch. Maybe you get stuck in a handstand for an extra second. Maybe not. Land the foot down. Life is exactly the same. We're all gonna meet in the press and lunge. It's feeding time for Kitty. <laughs> We're feeding our soul, she feeds her belly. I don't know who's doing life better, but here we are. Feel the left hip drawing back. Feel the outer right hip reaching forward and press the skin on the back of the right knee skyward as you lean to the left. You'll hold here. Reach a little bit more through the right arm to further stretch the front of the left hip. And then inhale up. Hands can come to prayer if your arms are tired. You'll lean forward. And then from this position, continue to lean. Lift the back leg up. In this position, feel the stability amongst your hips. Make that a gain that brings you into the present moment. Alignment's not just practical. In more ways, it's practical to bring our attention to our body in this space and time and connect with the subtler energy. Hands down. Whew. Okay, just do what feels good here. Intuit, less intellect. Go ahead, let it feel nice. Okay. All right, I think we're getting lazy. We gotta get back to work. Go ahead, just kidding. Place your hands down. 
Eyes on one spot. And then from here, feel that your body is going to stay in a unit through your hips. You'll bend the standing leg. Maybe you get caught. Maybe not. Go ahead. Take a few tries. And as you're doing this, see if you can feel what balance means. So rather than trying so hard to do all the things that I had mentioned, which I've mentioned a few times, we've already got that in our system. Now you've learned some of the rules, let it go, and what does balance feel like? Trust what you've learned and play. Land your left foot down. Inhale, arms up, crescent lunge. Take your right hand down from here. Lift the big toe side of the left foot up and let the hip sink. Feel the outer left hip reach to the right side of the room as you open the chest. Side plank. Press the right hip up into the left. Extend the spine forward. And vinyasa. Hands down. Move and breathe. Take a child's pose. We're gonna move to the wall now. So go ahead and if you need to move your stuff close to, to a wall, you can. We'll meet at the wall. Okay, so this next exercise is for everyone and this is to practice moving from the thinking part of the practice where we're over analyzing the poses into a more feely place. So if you feel like you need to stay with the intellectual stuff, then of course I trust your judgment, but I'm going to encourage you to, I'll come over it one more time and then see if you can just trust whatever sticks and uh, feel what balance might feel like. All right, so I'm gonna measure myself less than one leg distance from the wall now I'm gonna put my hands down and begin to crawl my legs up the wall. If when you get here, you're already feeling a little freaked out, then just hang out here and try to breathe, okay? If you can think, make sure you're pushing the floor away. So we don't wanna have that sinking in the shoulders, we wanna be lifted. You'll bend one knee and lift the other leg off. Now the first thing that happens when we tend to lift the leg off is we go into a back bend and we reach that leg away from us. For today, what we're pra or actually I should say for now, what we're practicing is the same thing we did in the three leg down dog. So in the three leg down dog, we had that thigh bone pulling into its socket. So that keeps the lower back more stable. We're gonna do that again. So here I am, I walk the feet up. And then from here, one knee comes in and actually it doesn't even need to come down that much. The other leg lifts and we're trying to feel that we're not in a back bend. And then from here, enough thinking. What would it take to make the foot that's on the wall less important? So the idea is not to continue. Once you feel like you have the nuts and bolts in place, you don't need to continue to analyze the pose. Feel how much weight the foot that's on the wall is that supporting you and see if you can figure out how to make it less necessary for balance. So we're going to move away from the anal an analysis and just see if we can figure out how to make the foot on the wall less important for your balance. Play with that for a little while, okay? For those of you who are already balancing in the center of the room, we're gonna do an exercise to get the body a bit straighter. So you'll have your fingertips by the wall. You're going to practice kicking up. And then from this position, we're practicing drawing the upper back into the wall. Okay, so rather than having that sway back here, we're practicing drawing the front ribs into the back body. If you're working on balance the other way, remember one spot on the floor is going to be most helpful for finding your stability there. Again, stable gaze, stable body. Keep playing around with it. Maybe you crank up some, some tunes at home to make it a little bit more fun. 
Okay, keep playing with these guys just a little longer. Working those front ribs in, pressing them into the back body. Maybe from there, keeping that drop gaze as you move away from the wall. So this is really advanced. To have the gaze dropped, the front ribs in. So I know that there's gonna be practitioners of lots of different levels. You do what feels best for your body here. We're gonna hang out for a little bit longer. And then I have a treat for you, so go ahead and keep playing. Simba's feeling a little shy right now, but I just want her to say hi to you guys. Meow. Meow. All right, you're free. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna work on the hop switch. Okay, for this transition, so that was in the Syria Namaskar H flow, we're gonna practice kicking up, and if you're ready to move further from the wall so that it's less supportive, I welcome you. All right, this is a great opportunity to practice kicking up and not having the wall as supportive. Okay, so you'll go ahead, you'll lift one leg up. Maybe you're gonna try not to hit the wall, okay? That is, if you know you can already get into your handstand quite comfortably, you'll try not to hit the wall. If you are having difficulty still, you can keep your hands a little bit closer. I would actually, if I were daring myself, I'd move further away from the wall still but because my studio is closed right now, space is limited. Let's see if I can show better here. Okay, cool. So for those of you who are ready to progress, you'll move your hands further from the wall. If you feel like you just need to know the wall is still back there, you'll use the wall. From this position, I'm kicking up, switch. Okay, and I'm going to soften my attachment to the idea of keeping the low belly, or keeping the um, sway from coming in the, into the low back. So if you want to, you know your low back can handle it, having the body in a little bit of a back bend will help with balance, okay? So this position here tends to be easier to balance in than when we're straight. So go ahead, you can play around with those hop switches, you know if your lower back doesn't feel right, that's not the best variation for you. But if it's feeling okay, you might find a little bit more hang time that way. You just know the exercise, once you can do that and you feel the hang time, you wanna work that front rib area and also keeping the shoulders nice and open. Hey, if you're in the middle of something good, keep working on it. I'm going to elaborate a little bit more here for those of you who are interested in how the shoulder opening and the front ribs relate to the sway back. So if shoulders are tight, that is, I don't have the mobility to keep the external rotation or the protraction, the spreading of my shoulder blades when I take my arms overhead. So that is typically more muscular people or just people who do this a lot, moms, with babies, the upper back gets rounded. So we want to feel, if we can't, that the shoulders are in front of the body for those who are uh, on the tighter side. So that body is incapable of having the arm in line without the shoulder blades starting to pinch together. So we want to feel this, which tends to take people, people's arms forward. Okay, so when the arms are forward, the chest goes forward and the front ribs tend to be out a little bit. And that can lead to more of a sway back because those front ribs are dropping forward. So if you have tight shoulders, I, can, I would say it's fine to keep your chest forward, but start to think of those front ribs drawing in and the tailbone lifting up. 
and you can do so with the foot at the wall. Think of those front ribs drawing in and the tailbone lifting up. And then maybe you take the chest forward more and you practice finding the foot that's on the wall is increasingly less important. All right, we're gonna come back to the center now. Do a little prep work for Ekapada Kundinyasana 2. Kind of like we discussed. And then we'll see if we can link the two poses. All right, sound like a party? I think so. My kind of party, that's for sure. Let me just make sure you guys are set here so you can see everything nicely. Yes, good. Okay. Whew. Next step, down dog. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit more of a shake out on the hips. Inhale, reach the right leg up, bend the knee, open the hip, and then go through full range of motion there. Three circles in one direction. And then let's take it three circles in the other direction. Cool, pause, and then draw the right knee into the chest and step forward. We're gonna start with a half split, so go ahead, place your back knee down and start to straighten the front leg. In this position, try to reach the hips back and the spine forward. So this would be that extended leg in Ekapada Kundanyasana 2. And then bend your front knee. We're gonna sink the hips here and stretch the front of the back hip. Keep dropping the hips down. Reach the left arm up and lean to the right. Feel the front of the left hip continue to open up. So that's gonna be the front hip of the back leg for our Ekapada Kundinyasana 2. And then lift yourself up. We'll take the hands forward to the inside of your right leg. And then from here, take your right or your left ankle across the mat and start to wiggle your front leg forward. Reach your left arm up. At the same time, feel your outer right hip draw toward the back of your space as your chest extends forward. That right hip reaches back, the chest reaches forward. Hold here for three, two. Take the left hand down. We'll get a little bit more into the front of the hip there. So you'll bend your right knee and begin to take your forearms closer to the floor. Maybe you wanna wiggle worm the back knee further back. Holding here, let's lift the back knee up and we'll rock for three. Keep pressing the back of the left knee skyward. Two, maybe take the chest a little lower. And then come back to your hands. From here, take your right palm to the back of the right calf and push it forward. If you have tighter hamstrings, you can pull the right foot back. Otherwise, wiggle the right foot forward. And now, the number one thing, chest forward. Hop off that back leg forward. Maybe you look to the right foot and you land the right cheek on the floor. The number one thing that gets in the way, I've had and I can see Leilani's here too. Um, one thing we notice for, gosh, I would say over a year, kept saying chest forward, chest forward, chest forward. And then what happens when we finally get it after even a year of hearing it? Oh, I'd take the chest forward even more. Yes, chest forward. All right, if you feel like you're having difficulty with that action of taking your chest forward, sometimes having blocks on the hands can help. From here, chest forward, chest forward. So that means the sternum bone, this whole thing, the head, the hips, the whole torso has to hop forward. And again, you can land your temple down if that's helpful for you. And now you have that sequence. So if you're doing your practice at home and then you think, I want to practice Ekapada Kunyanyasana too. I didn't have time in that one class where we're doing handstands and all a bunch of other stuff. Do your warm up 
do those poses, we'll run through them again, and then practice your Ekapada Kundanyasana too. Let's all meet back in down dog. Lift the left leg up, bend the knee, open the hip, and make some circles there. Switch directions. Okay, maybe you want your pen and paper for this one. Roll the hip down, draw the knee into the chest, step forward. Okay, so one of the moves we want to do is a half split for the hamstring. Okay, so go ahead, you place your right knee down, straighten the left leg, and start to reach the chest forward. So that front leg is the front leg in Ekapada Kundinyasana too. Again, yoga is it's a matter of paying attention and you can figure out the sequencing. All right, and then from here, we're gonna bend that front knee, sink the back hip lower and lift up. Continue to feel the hips drop, reach the right arm skyward, maybe both arms if you did so on the other side, and lean over. So we're getting a nice deep stretch there. Feel the more you lift your belly, so if you just let the hips fall forward, you actually shorten the angle and don't get as deep of a stretch. The more you lift your low belly and sink the hips down, the more opening you'll get at the front, across the front of that hip. Straighten up, and then from here, place your hands to the instep of your left foot. So you may take the foot a little wider. Take the back ankle across, and then begin to take the front leg, wiggle, wiggle forward. Reach your right arm up. Breathe here. Feel the front of your left shoulder lean back, and draw your outer left hip toward the back of your space. And take your right hand down, place your left hand to the instep of the left leg and swivel your right ankle back. From here, you'll want to lower toward your forearms. Okay, maybe just one forearm makes it down and that's fine too. Actually, that would probably be the inner one. All right, lift your back knee up and feel the energy of the back leg lifting as your hips sink down. Hold here for another three, two, and come back to your pose. We're gonna wiggle the shoulder underneath the thigh, place the palm down and start to wiggle the front toes forward or around. And then here, hop forward, maybe the chin or the temple on your right cheek comes down. Okay, here's another quick little tip for you. If you have a wall space from here, what you could do is you have one leg on the wall, and then from this position, I practice lifting the foot up the wall and maybe pushing off. So you have the foot down, you lift the knee up, and then you chest forward body forward. All right, if you feel like you need more arm or core strength for this, I mean, we could all use more arm or core strength for so many things. So you can go to my YouTube channel, check out the arm and core strengthening playlists. I'm sure Pure has a ton of content on there for you. So you have the resources, use them. All right, take a child's pose. Feel your breath. So one of the great ways of letting go of what happens so you get a fresh start, even while you're in the thick of it, is to take a mental break from it. And you can do that right now just by thinking about your breath.
and slowly lift yourself up. Okay, so yogi's choice now. You can continue to work on your handstand. You can, I actually recommend everybody roll out your wrists a little bit while I talk. Or you can continue to work on your Ekapada Kundanyasana too. Another option that we discussed is handstand into Ekapada 2 or headstand. Okay, those of you who are already gung ho for a handstand, I'm going to leave you to your own devices for now. Headstand might be a fun thing that many of you may want to start to, to flirt with. Okay, that's how I like to look at learning new poses is at first we're just kind of like flirting with each other. Like, let's see how you do. Like, how do you feel in my body? Like, it looks kind of cool when someone does it, but like, is it, is, it, is it for me? Are you for me? Are we a right match? Who knows? Let's give it a shot. All right, so headstand, top of the head and hands make a triangle shape. All right, you'll tuck your chin to your chest and place the top of the head down. The number one thing that goes wrong in the headstand is when the knees lift, the upper back rounds. We want to feel the shoulders are lifting to keep the upper back flat. So there is some energy of the shoulders lifting up. Okay, so from here, up, and then we want to feel that the neck is long, so you should be able to talk with as clear of a pathway in headstand as handstand, or <laughs> as right side up. Maybe not handstand, at least not yet. Little tip most yoga teachers won't tell you, holding your breath sometimes when you're first learning strength poses makes them easier. You don't wanna keep that practice forever, but it's a useful little tip that um, may take you to the next level. And then from there, we gotta learn how to breathe again, which we can add, I mean, breath happens. We'll figure that out, I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so top of the head down, hands back, shoulders up. One knee to one tricep, one knee to the other, butt up, or you can practice swinging one leg down. Keep those shoulders lifting and lift up. You can kick the wall. All right, from here, let's take the hamstring um, flexibility out. Practice drawing the knee in and taking the thigh to the tricep. From here, you don't wanna just sink down on this leg, I'm actually pushing the inner thigh there onto my arm, and then I use the toes of this leg lifting up to counter the weight. So I push down into the arm with my thigh, I reach the chest forward, and I'm lifting up massively with that top leg. Okay, so it's that root to rise. The feeling is the same when we started class off and we push the sit bones down and we have a lift of energy. That's what that thigh, even for those of you who are new to Ekapada Kundinyasana 2, push the leg into the arm and see if that can help you. All right? I'm out of breath. I'm going to let you guys work for a moment here. All right. Keep working. Just gonna give one little tip for those of who are flirting with the handstand to EPK2 transition. I'm gonna switch legs because that's healthy. All right, so from here, it's a tight space in my apartment. Okay, I am up, okay. In my handstand, and for this one, I'm gonna bend my knee just to cut out the extra energy it would take to have the leg straight. So I have the knee bent. I add that little sway in my back like the naughty handstand. I'm gonna keep the energy in my toes as I pull my chest forward. Thigh to arm, toes up. So these toes keep my body up and the chest is reaching forward. <sighs> Last 20 seconds, finish up whatever genius experiment you're working on and just meet me back in the center <sighs> consider for a second what it means to be a human right now right now you get to play on your phone work with your body make cool shapes and figure out ways of interacting with challenges that make life a more graceful, easeful joy ride.
Life is good. It's good right here, right now. As much as we can count our blessings, let's do it. Take a larger inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Let's twist. Cross your ankles and sit back. Extend the legs forward. Take your left hand outside the right thigh. Lift the center of the chest up and revolve. Switch sides. Lift the chest up and revolve. And release. We're gonna do a fancy move now because we haven't had enough of those. <laughs> Take your hands beside you. Roll onto your right hip. Swing the legs back. Hopefully your mat is nice and sweaty at this point and that's easy enough for you. All right, we'll meet on our forearms. Press the elbows down, lift the chest up. Press the palms down, lift the elbows up. Energetically think of the palms reaching toward your hips. So there is that subtle but powerful energy. And release. Bend your knees, grab hold of your feet. I prefer typically the inner edge of the foot, but you may like the outer. Go ahead, kick the feet away, lift the chest up. We'll rock forward and back for three, two, kick the feet away, hold, and relax. Take your hands by your sides and press up and back, child's pose. Feel your forehead on the floor. Feel your forehead on the floor and imagine earthing energy bouncing through that frontal lobe, the critical analytical part of your mind and softening it. Slowly lift your forehead up. Swivel your ankles to the right and sit behind. Extend the legs forward. Reach the arms forward and slowly roll yourself down. Palms face up. Press the back of your head into the mat and lift your chest. Draw the shoulder blades gently together and lay them back down. Let the feet flop open. Soften your cheeks and face and close your eyes. Feel your breath. As wonderful and as helpful as our knowledge, what we know is, as the rules are, all of that information is only based on what's known. There is so much more. At one point in the future, what we know now will be considered primitive. And so we can practice instead cultivating our intuition a wisdom that transcends our intellect. Continue to rest here for as long as you'd like. I'm signing off, friends. Love you.